Hey, Brian Miller here. I'm going to show you today how to set up your Unity project with version control using Mercurial and Source Tree today. Um, I find this is a very, very easy way to version a project, and it gives you a lot more robust ability to uh, recover from disasters, to version your files, um, and to even back up your files and share and collaborate with them. Uh, it works a lot better than Google Drive or Dropbox like a lot of people use. So I've got an existing Unity project here. Um, we can see the file structure here. It's a simple um, everyday Unity project. The assets folder's got some stuff in it. Uh, we've got our temporary library and temp folders and our project settings folder. I'm going to use Source Tree. Uh, Source Tree is a version control interface that offers a graphical user interface to uh, Mercurial and Git repositories. Um, a lot of people use command line with version control, but I find source trees very, very nice, especially for artists and level designers and people who aren't necessarily all that near code all the time. Um, it's also very good for developers who don't have a lot of patience or like pretty things. So source tree is a pretty simple application. Um, again, I like to, if you're new to version control, I always want to encourage you to think about version control as change sets, as a log, um, as you know, a time machine for your project. Don't think about it as Google Drive or an FTP server or Dropbox for your project because that's not its job. Its job is to remember the history of your project and allow you to jump around within that history, create new states, create new log entries, and track your work as you're versioning it. Um, it replaces your having to rename files as scene version one, scene version two, scene version three, etc. And it allows you to go in and be very experimental and do some messy things that may break your project and be comfortable in that you can roll back from that if you need to. So in Source Tree, um, if you've gotten past the check for updates, please register, please do this, please do that. You'll have a pretty simple UI like I have here. If you click the clone new button, we can create a new repository from a local folder. Uh, I suggest you use a Mercurial repository. If you like Git, that's totally fine. Go ahead and use Git. Um, I'm going to hook up my destination path to my project folder. So I know what my project folder is right now, so I'm just going to use this. If you need to go digging for it, that's what this dot 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 is for. Um, I'm also going to allow it to bookmark the repository. That'll give me a bookmark on a sidebar that I don't have showing right now, so that I can quickly access the repository again in the future. I'll just click Create. Okay, so now I've got a repository. This uh, file status working copy view is kind of our uh, pending section. It's a section of files that all are new or uh, you know, files that need to be added to be removed, that have been changed, etc. that we then have to wrap up inside uh, little packages called commits. Before I do my first commit, I always like to set up my ignore file. Ignore file is important because there's a lot of files in here that I don't want to keep and that I don't want to commit to source control, um, particularly the temp and the library folders, but there will be other files as well that we don't want, thumbnail files, for example. Um, library and temp folder contain a lot of things that we don't want that might be too big, that might be unnecessary, that might be temporary, or that might even cause problems like the Unity lock file. We don't want to commit the lock file from Unity while we're working on a project because it can stop us from being able to work on the project later. I've got an ignore file for you that you are free to download. If you go to ryanmiller.ca slash ignorefile.zip, you'll download a package that includes an ignore file. So this is .hg ignore. This is a mercurial ignore file. So if you copy and paste this into your project directory, Just put it down right there. It should go beside your HG folder in your root of your project directory. Now this HG folder is your local repository. Um, modern version control has local repositories. It doesn't rely on a server. You can work completely offline if you want and you don't have to ever have a server uh, or a remote repository if you don't want to. This HG ignore file sits here and if we open it up in Notepad, we can see it's ignoring the temp folder ignoring the library folder. Um, let me pop that open in Sublime. There we go. So you can see it's ignoring all kinds of different file extensions and folders. 
I'll pop back to source tree now. Source tree should do a good job automatically updating. Um, sometimes it doesn't if you know you've changed files and you don't see them in this list. Just press F5 and it should force a refresh. So if I checkbox just this one file, hgignore, and add a commit message, I can then commit that and then every commit from now on will use that ignore file to ignore things I don't want included in the project. I'm also going to uncheck push changes immediately too right now. Um, push in version control terms is a lot like upload. Um, pull is like download. So push is basically saying also give it to the server. Uh, we don't want to do that right now because we don't have a server set up. So I'm just going to click commit. Okay, so now I've got default branches showing up now. So this is my default branch. And you can see now here's my first commit, adding ignore file, right? So there's my little log message saying what this commit has. There's the files that have been changed. In that case, we have a, uh, a plus sign for hgignore. I added a new file and you can even see who did it, uh, what time, what the actual change set is, all that. Now I'm free to include all the other files now. So I've got all my assets for my project. I can just click this check box at top. Okay, so now under commit message, I'll say initial commit. So this has got the whole project as it stands right now. I'll click commit. So now if I pop back here, I can see I've got two commits. I've got my ignore file and I've got the rest of the files committed. Now if I go into my project and I create another folder, so let's say I create a script and I'll call it, I will make this later. I'll jump back to my working copy and you can see that source tree can see there's a new file in this folder. It's got a question mark saying, what is this? I can checkbox that and say, add a new script. Not sure what it does yet. And commit that. And you can see the history of my project is starting to unravel. Now what's nice about this is let's say I didn't want that new script. Um, I don't actually want that new script because it doesn't actually do anything. I can now double click on this initial commit that I already have. Use clean discard changes. And now it's as if I've gone back to that commit. So when I go back to Unity you can see that script is gone. If I go back forward that script is back. So now I can kind of travel time very, very quickly in my project. So I've got this push with a three on it, and I've got nowhere to put all my files. If I wanted to tell my friend to download my project and start working on it, they can't because they don't have a copy of it. They don't have access to it. It's not anywhere except for my local machine. That's where services like Bitbucket come in. So I can create a new repository on Bitbucket. I'll just say create repository here. Make sure it's set up as a mercurial repository. Um, I like to set my language. I don't think it makes that much of a difference. And create. And now I can set this up as a remote repository for my local repository to push to. So I usually click on this. I have an existing project after creating a new repository copy and paste this URL that they give me, not the HG push part, just the URL. And then in source tree, I'll go under repository settings, add, copy and paste this URL, give it a title. Um, and I'm going to add this server as somewhere that my local repository can push to. There we go. Okay. If this is your first time plugging in your Bitbucket repository, you'll probably need to enter your username and password, and we can see our repository here under Remotes. So I'll click Push. Um, it's just getting ready to tell me all the commits that are going to get pushed up here. That sounds good. OK. And now it's actually uploading it to the server. OK, all done. Now if I hop back to this repository web page I have, I hope you didn't close it, I'm going to jump into the commits section and I can see I have all the same commits in this remote repository now that I did locally. 